morning. Thank you very much for being here. And I know a few of you have actually spent the whole of Saturday and Sunday with us. Um, we couldn't do a um, feedback to everybody that came because we wanted to have an opportunity to do the wrap-up after we really wrapped up yesterday uh, and to try and do it in central so that we also have a chance to brief people in the private sector, in the community sector, and in the government sector. So thank you very much for being with us today. So today is a quick feedback of what happened over one and a half days. Actually, it was over two days. And we're taking a bit of a risk because usually everything is organized way ahead of time. So there is no, um, so, so organization is good. But sometimes it loses that organic developmental nature that happens as things happen. So what we did yesterday after uh, the workshops were over is that only then did we put the presentation together for you today. So not sure whether you've heard that the IPCC actually has come up with a special report. This is definitely worth reading. There is a summary for decision makers. Uh, so if you haven't looked at this, it is online. This is what it looked like at the plenary. Uh, on a Saturday morning, we had 500 people with us, which was quite extraordinary. So I think we can dispel with the concern that Hong Kong people don't know or don't care enough about climate change. I think there is a solid group of people uh, from the community who cares. We also had four workshops, and some of the issues we discussed was how do we understand climate change from the perspective of adaptation and resilience? So we wanted to talk about how extreme is extreme. You'll hear from a number of scientists later on how to look at the extreme. Of course, it has to do with our physical assets. What are we concerned about in Hong Kong? And whilst we won't go into the details here, at the conference, we identified what are Hong Kong's key infrastructure from the perspective of the government. But that doesn't mean it includes everything from the private sector. So that needed to be added in. But also, even at a community level, if you live in a particular district, something may not be a citywide essential infrastructure, but it might be critical in your district. So having an understanding of what are the assets overall in the city, as well as down to a district level, is also very important. And then planning and design assumptions. How do you understand what the shocks might be? So clearly, we need more discussions about these areas. Now, while sometimes talking about climate change is all about doom and gloom, but actually, there are also some opportunities for us to do things better. We need knowledge. We need to collaborate, but also, it is an opportunity for the community to come together by itself, with the stakeholders, and with government. So we can see this as an opportunity to bring the community together. Adaptation, very expensive worldwide. And it will be very expensive for many places around the world. I'm going to lead, uh, I'm going to ask our scientists who worked in the workshops uh, we'll start talking about heat and drought. We'll talk about the risk of increased precipitation. Sea level rise is already happening. Storm surges is real. And there are also oceans-related issues that is not enough understood. So we also very briefly want to introduce oceans-related issue. Then landslides. Hong Kong has a lot of mountainsides. Very critical that we're able to manage this well. You might remember this. There are other shocks that are not necessarily physical in nature, but they have a tremendous impact on communities. Food, water, the security of your electricity. If we don't have any one of these, communities are at huge risk. We also want to remember vulnerable communities, in particular, when we have these shocks. Finance, who's going to pay for things? And also philanthropy, because philanthropy can help us in the early days in areas that we may not completely understand yet 
to help us trigger some early responses. So I'm going to stop here now and hand over to our first speaker, Ruby.